Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to our this is last event today. We are having a guest speaker, Kurt Jansen from the Tourism Alliance. He will talk us about a bit of uh, the government policies in tourism in the UK and how do we deal with the major issues such as VAT or visas. Um, Kurt, if you would like to come in stage. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, just, just before I play it, I'm going to play a video to, to start with. Um, and basically, it's a video that we use uh, to engage with politicians. So uh, we launched it at our parliamentary reception last year. And kind of uh, each time we go and see kind of the MPs, ministers. Um, we show them a copy of this because it's really easy for them to kind of grasp what tourism is. Because kind of most of the time, Politicians see tourism as something you do when you're not wor working. You know, it's not a real industry. It doesn't produce cars. You don't have people hitting pieces of metal with it, and so they tend to not kind of understand kind of how it contributes to uh, the UK at the moment, and also kind of the UK's uh, recovery from you know the recession, uh, because tourism has been one of the sectors that has actually been doing really well. So this is how we kind of um, start our engagement process with with ministers. So this is what they say. The idea of that is kind of rather than they remember everything kind of about it, that they have kind of one thing that they go, wow, I didn't know that, and it kind of sticks in their head. And once you've gone and got that foot in the door, then you can kind of go through it and say, okay, now that you realise the potential and the growth of the industry, this is what we can do for you. Let's engage and let's kind of see what we can do to kind of uh, allow tourism businesses to, to flourish and grow in the UK. So. Um, get us time off. Hopefully, I'll grab the mic from my hand. No, that's not there. No? I'm trying to have one, so I'll just stand here and. Oh, okay. Just tell me when to. Oh, no, I'll do it. Yeah, that's fine. It works. Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, what are we? The Tourism Alliance, we're basically an umbrella trade association for the tourism sector in the UK, which means that we basically get together all the trade associations who have any interest in tourism pull them all together and so that we go to government with kind of a, a single voice um, and it's consistent, coherent messaging to government. So it's one thing that kind of governments hate is different people coming to them and saying different things and they just suddenly go, well, what do I do? You know, you're telling me this, they're telling me that. I've got no kind of, uh, I'm not going to move because I'm just getting different messages. So if we can kind of speak with one voice, they get a consistent message and it's more likely that they'll do something to support the industry. Um, there's 50 trade associations uh, in membership and they represent about 200,000 businesses uh, in total. So it's everyone from uh, British Hospitality Association with the, the hotels, uh, European tour operators for inbound, uh, ABTA for outbound operators, even you know, uh, National Trust, um, Historic Houses, Royal uh, Historic Palaces, uh, I'm just trying to think, or even Heritage Railway, so kind of a British Beer and Pub Association because kind of the third kind of uh, thing, the most kind of wanted thing to do if you are a tourist in the UK is go to a pub. Um, so it brings us all together and uh, gives us a good end to government. Um, and that's what we do, lobby and work with uh, government. We're kind of a a conduit uh, between DCMS and other government departments and the industry itself. So if DCMS wants to uh, consult on something or know the opinion of the industry, they come to us, we spread the information out, kind of get uh, all the industry views, pull them back together and kind of feed them back to government. Pretty easy stuff. Um, and the reason we do it is because one in 11 people in the UK actually work in tourism related industries. Um, so that's just, to, uh, I'm just trying to think, 2.72 million people in the UK workforce are in tourism related industries. And it's a real growth sector at the moment, as you know, seen by the, uh, the video. Um, over the last three years, uh, one third of all the new jobs created in the UK have been in tourism related industries, which is, is quite phenomenal. Um, and these, the good thing about kind of these 2.7 uh, million uh, jobs 
is that they're pretty evenly spread right throughout the UK, whereas in most industries you get kind of centres where industries are concentrated on, so you get kind of uh, car manufacturing out at Swindon, and um, lots of uh, Luton, places like that, um, which it helps kind of local economies there that doesn't have a wider impact on the UK. Whereas there is not, no, sorry, I tell a lie, there is one area of the region in the UK which has less than 100,000 people working in the tourism industry, and most have a lot more than that. So it's incredibly well spread out, and it's incredibly um, concentrated on SMEs, so over 80% of the businesses um, in the tourism sector employ less than 10 people. So you're talking about kind of not just uh, an industry that helps kind of uh, urban areas, but also rural seaside areas, the areas that government really wants to kind of concentrate employment uh, on because they're ones that are kind of devoid of any other opportunities at the moment. So we do a really good job in creating employment and creating it right throughout the UK so everyone can benefit. And the other bit about it is that one of the main areas that the government has a problem with at the moment is youth unemployment. And again, tourism does really well when it comes to youth unemployment. 44% of people are aged under 30. Now, there's a lot of kind of talk that you hear about, um, you know, we are, but there's a burden of flipping jobs and you know, they're kind of low skill, low pay, yeah, yeah. And to an extent, that, that's true, obviously, because you've got a lot of restaurant work and you've got a lot of hotel work. But the thing about it is that if you look at kind of who's working there, the, the people that work in these jobs actually don't stay there, they're not kind of in it for life, they move on to other jobs. And the jobs that they get in the tourism area gives them a real head start and time for other jobs where they have the kind of the people management skills uh, that they gain and are able to progress. So it's kind of a, a nursery for jobs in the rest of the economy rather than just being kind of uh, dead end, no future jobs. It's, yeah, we see it as a kind of, uh, we're entrepreneurship and, and in this area for lots of real life skills start. Um, back in my home country of New Zealand, which is why I put the New Zealand walking thing in there. Um, yeah, the job in the tourism industry is seen as kind of where you go after kind of uh, graduating to kind of work for a few years build up the kind of living lodge, have a look around the place, and then you go into your kind of full-time employment, you know, that kind of gap year type of thing. Um, so, you know, this is what we push on government, is that, you know, we can help cure the kind of long-term unemployment, especially when it comes to, to youth. And, you know, as you can see by this, this is uh, the, the last slide, the slide looks slightly different. These are the figures for 2012, whereas the video was 2011. But you see that kind of, you know, how we rank compared to other major sectors of the economy. Um, the domestic tourism grew by 5% uh, last year. What was even more amazing is the, uh, just, just to kind of stray a bit into some other field, um, you heard we heard of this, the staycation, all that type of thing, and this is kind of where people are pulling back from overseas and staying in the UK. Well, what's happening at the moment is we're seeing a lot of a, a shift to the daycation, in that um, people's uh, discretionary spend is being squeezed more and more at the moment, and so rather than kind of take a, a weekend break away, uh, you know, the major cost components of that are cost accommodation and meals. So people are pulling back and just kind of going on a daycation out somewhere in the car um, and thereby lowering their costs. So day visits have grown by an enormous amount, uh, 5.6 billion in the last year, which is quite an enormous amount. Um, but put together, uh, total tourism spend in the UK last year went up by nine billion pounds. And if you look at that in job creation terms, that's 180,000 new jobs for the UK in one year by one industry, which is, is quite something. And this is again what we sell to government as being one of the kind of key assets of the tourism industry. And one of the key benefits, you know, Kind of compared to other industries, if you want to increase, say, car manufacturing, 
you've got a huge lead in time and lead in costs in terms of developing the plant um, and you know, you're building your factory. It takes kind of four or five years to kind of develop uh, a new factory, bring it on stream and start producing and creating the jobs. Tourism industry, there's a lot of spare capacity in it. There's um, hotels generally running about 65% capacity throughout the year. So really, your return on your investment is incredibly quick. You can put out a marketing campaign in January and go by July, uh, you're getting the visitors in. So you've got you know, a six, only a six month lag between your investment and your return on investment, uh, which you just don't get in other industries. Um, and that's why kind of, we benefit as well. Um, another thing that we'll benefit from is global tourism growth uh, will be uh, increased by 6% by 2020. You have seen that, that video that I showed before, it uh, said, you know, in 2000, uh, 10 million uh, Chinese visitors covered overseas and that by 2020 there would be 100 um, uh, million Chinese traveling overseas. That's complete bollocks. <laughs> They, they will reach 100 billion in 2014. Um, the UNWTO's estimate, which that previous one was, um, was put out two years ago, and in, the, in two years, it's completely out of date. Um, 83 million Chinese visitors went overseas last year and uh, spent, uh, trying to think, it was 102 billion US dollars. I mean, it's phenomenal growth coming out of that market, um, which we're missing out on at the moment, but I'll go into that later. Um, but that just shows you, that's just kind of one market. Um, there are other fantastic kind of growth opportunities out there through um, India, Brazil, so I'm not a very good one at the moment. Um, and through Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, they're all kind of set to, to take off. And when they start traveling, they'll travel initially to the near kind of neighbors, but then they'll go for the, the long distance. And uh, if we can position ourselves well, we can really cash in on that. Um, 